Why do I have a giant knife axe thing? What? Hello you sexy beasts and welcome back to War Thunder. Um, yeah, patch 1.75 is just around the corner. It should actually be dropping this week. And I've actually been spending some time on the dev server getting some footage. Unless the patch drops right tomorrow, in which case I will have to do everything again and essentially all these two dev servers have been for nothing, I will over the next couple of days be releasing footage uh, that I get on the dev server, talking about a couple of the different tanks. One thing I can tell you right away, don't buy the AMX 13 S11. Just don't. Refund it if you have to. In any case, this video is going to be about the AMX 50 Souffle. Because I refuse saying the proper French name. Je ne parle pas français. This thing is quite nice. You're going to see it in the gameplay that falls, but this thing is really quite nice. It has 120mm gun and it's weathering 7.7. It's considered a heavy tank, but the armor isn't really all that great, at least not for the battle rating. But it's decently mobile and has an auto-loading 120mm gun. Okay, given it only fires AP with 33mm of penetration, but holy crap does this thing do some damage. In fact, let me just show you what I mean. This is some gameplay recorded live from a stream. Psst. Little tip. Totally not a plug. You should totally follow me on twitch.tv slash mikegirlsboom. Just saying. This is a rank 5 battle rating 7.7 .7 tank. Just pretty much the perfect battle rating. Honestly, the French tanks have an insane 7.7 .7 loadout. Look at that. You have the Foch, you have the Surbes, you have the MX-30. That's a very good 7.7 .7 loadout. They are going to be very strong in this battle rating. Now, this thing has the same gun as the AMX-50 Foch, it has a 120mm cannon which only fires AP. Although the AP isn't half bad, it has 303mm of penetration and does a lot of spawning damage. Like, literally a lot, you're going to see in the gameplay coming up how good this thing actually is. It has some decent armor, especially when you consider that you have these overlapping plates here around this area over here. But they are only 90mm this thick, 90 plus 90 gives 180, even with the overlapping plates you're going to have many tanks that, uh, that penetrate you. At 7.7 .7 especially, don't rely too much on your armor. Also, this thing is just a hash trap, look at this plate, it's only 16mm thick. If the hash doesn't bounce, it's going to do a shit ton of damage. Even through these sides here when... Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Since hash now goes um, 90 degrees from the angle of the um, of the plate, not from the impact point, but from the plate itself, if you hit one of these cheeks with hash, you're pretty much going to one-shot the tank. Also, a shit ton of ammo. <laughs> there's ammo in the front, there's ammo in the bottom, there's ammo in the middle, there's ammo in the back of the turret, there's ammo f***ing everywhere. One thing I really about, uh, really like about the oscillating turrets is the turret rotation speed. That's one of the, of the characteristics of French tanks with oscillating turrets. The traverse speed of the turret is really great, 30 degrees per second pretty much on most of the tanks that have oscillating turrets. And I love it. It's really, really awesome for city combat and stuff like that. Where you can react quickly to uh, changing uh, firing avenues, so to speak. Uh, now one of the bigger advantages that this thing has over the Foch is the autoloader. Whereas the Fosh does not get an autoloader and has about a 20 second stock reload, which is kind of bad, it's kind of slow. This thing with the autoloader has an 8 shot per minute uh, fire rate. It's about 1 shot every 8 or 9 seconds, I believe. Which is pretty much double the fire rate of the Fosh. And double the pain. It's kind of amazing in that regard. Uh, given that, only, that it has an autoloader, you only get 4 crew. Although it does get in a loader for some reason, which is kind of weird. Normally autoloading tanks don't have loaders, I'm not quite sure what's wrong with that. Maybe someone in the comments of this uh, video or in Twitch can tell me why this thing has an autoloader. Uh, but yeah, you do get 4 crew, which in a heavy tank is slightly below average, normally you have about 5 to 6 crew. 6 crew would be ideal, that would make this thing very survivable. 5 crew would be slightly better, 4 crew is manageable but not the best. You're not going to survive more than 2 shots most likely. Especially if they aim for the right side, they're going to get your gunner and commander in one shot, which takes out 2 of your crew immediately. And then you simply have to aim for the loader or the driver and you're dead. So 2 shots is the most thing you're going to, to survive. Especially given that the armor isn't the best. But yeah, I'm not too sure about the mobility actually. It is a pretty heavy tank, 57.8 tons. But fully upgraded, it also has an 850 horsepower engine, which is not half shabby. Gives an indicated top speed of 51 kilometers per hour, although we do know that tanks in Warfront generally don't reach a top speed advertised, at least most of them, most of them don't. Um, but it could have some decent mobility, I'm not quite sure about the reverse or the forward speed, we're gonna test that out in a bit. I think it is a 19 shot clip, so I'm not actually gonna take the full ammo load, no. 
Yeah, just a 19 shot clip. It's it's a pretty big clip. Although even taking away the ammo load, I think it's mostly going to be stored in the turret still. Uh, let's just confirm. Yeah, it's still stored in the turret, so... You can't really escape ammo racks in this tank. A penetrating hot through the turret will most likely result in a uh, fiery, fiery death. And you're always going to have ammo in the turret. If you have ammo in your tank in general. But yeah, at least we got the, the ammo in the... In the hallway, which is not too bad. In 90 shots, 19 shots should be just about enough to hold us through the round. And if it isn't, we can simply reload the clip in the uh, in the capture zone. Although, keep in mind, you cannot reload the um, shells one by one in the capture zone. I don't think you can. You have to actually wait for the full reload with the full clip. So you first of all have to have no ammo in your tank now uh, in order to reload the clip. And it's going to make you slightly vulnerable for a while, because clips take longer to reload than individual shells. So yeah, if we run out of ammo, we're going to be quite vulnerable, but chances are we're going to die by that time anyways. There are going to be bots everywhere in a bit, they tend to bunch up quite a bit. Thankfully with the autoloader, our reload isn't half bad. So we're going to see if we can actually try and kill some stuff without immediately dying. Oh, hello. I'm not sure if we can actually penetrate this guy. Yes, we can. Lower plate. There it goes. The shell is decent, but I don't think it's good enough to go for the upper frontal plate of an IS-3. Although I haven't tried and I don't really want to try. Uh, but yeah, lower frontal plate, absolutely no problem. The spoiling this shell creates is absolutely insane. You have absolutely no problem killing sh in killing tanks in one shot. Honestly, very rarely are you not going to one shot tanks. Especially shooting from the front, the spoiling just takes care of the rest. It's really amazing. Also new in this patch, uh, if you see, if you look at the minimap, you can see the red icon over there. Uh, it seems like the icon persists and indicates where a enemy tank died, which could be useful, I suppose. Although I have a feeling that many people are going to be um, confused by it and might um, uh, shoot at it. Oh shit! Oh hello. 54 should have absolutely no problem going through the upper front of the plate. Once again, spawning takes care of the rest. Reloading is decently fast, there's another IS-3. Once again, one shot, go for the ammo rack. Even without hitting the ammo rack, the, uh, the spawning took out two of the guys. Alright, what else? Oh, hello. There we go, another one down. <laughs> Honestly, I fucking love this gun. I really, really do love this gun. It's amazing what this thing can do. I do have to watch my flanks though. The bots can be. They can be very nasty when it comes to flanking you. I'm just going to invite just slightly. I think there might be some guys in the spawn. The bots do tend to leave the spawn one at a time. So hopefully we can catch some guys here and. There he is. Should we try the upper front plate? Yeah, no, it bounces off the upper front plate. It does bounce off the upper front plate. Oh shit. Don't shoot me, please. Didn't one-shot, actually. I mean, he's going to die. He's a bot, and the bots don't have fire prevention equipment, but... I'm surprised that did not one-shot. Also, we bounced the shell. That's that's good. Alright, I think we should get the fuck out of here. Uh, our team is capturing A, they got B. Yeah, that's, a, that's, the, that's one difference between this map and uh, the Marginal line. The bots just don't work on the Marginal line. Not at all. Also, uh, actually, I don't think I can sh Yeah, no, he's in the spawn. Uh, the turrets are now physical objects. They actually stay on the map, and you can use them to play football with. No, seriously, you can push the turrets around. It's, it's fucking amazing. I'm not sure if they actually work as armor. I am yet to test if you can actually push a turret around and, for example, use it to hide your uh, lower plate. It's a mobile piece of armor. But I think they actually might, because from, from what I've done shooting at the, the turrets on the ground, they do actually... Um block shots it seems. I'm not sure if they actually do, but they do seem to block shots. Alright, going for the engine. Again, this thing has so much pen and so much mass, it doesn't matter if you hit the engine, it just goes straight through and the spawning takes care of the rest. As long as you hit the, the flat front of a tank or the flat back, yeah, not much you're going to survive it. Alright, what else do we have around here? Oh, hello. No tank for the year. Goodbye. <laughs> I might actually have to go to uh, to the capture zone. Oh shit! 
And here is where the very fast turret rotation speed of this thing comes in, in handy. Remember, 30 degrees per second, this thing is no slouch. Not at all. Can't turn. It's not the most amazing, of course, AA are much faster than that, but for a heavy tank, with a gun of this size, this thing can react to threats very, very, very well. Might even be better than the Fosh in that regard. The Fosh is the same gun, but since it's a TD with a limited um, gun traverse, and since all the armor is in the front, like the Fosh has a 40mm side armor plate, you angle even slightly, you're dead. There's no question about it. Um, since that's the case, I think the Fosh is better for long range engagements. You can use the armor to bounce shots from long range, but as soon as you get into city combat, you're kind of fucked. Because you, you, can't, you can't simply react quickly to, uh, to threats, and they are going to take you down as well if you don't pay attention. But uh, the MX-50, the, the heavy tank, is actually much better for city combat. You have a faster reload, you have a very good turret traverse, and you have just an amazing gun. The armor isn't the best. Give, okay, given the armor isn't the best, you do have to kind of shoot first. But if you shoot first, to look at that, it's just one shot left and right. <laughs> uh, no, the 120mm AP wasn't buffed, because it was already buffed before. Uh, the guns of the Conqueror and the M103 already have this. It just extends to this tank as well. It was only 75 and 100mm AP that was buffed. For this patch. By the way, we had 19 shots in the clip when we still have 5 rounds left, so you definitely do not need to, to carry both clips. It's just an additional uh, danger of being uh, ammo wrecked. You don't need it. Alright, a nice free over there. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, that, that wasn't really a full penetration, I don't think. Ah! Yeah. 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 Where did it hit? Cheek. Cheek. You can't really angle this tank. You can't really angle this tank. Fair enough. Fair enough. So does the AP buff carry over to APDS? No. No, no, no. It doesn't carry over to APDS. It's only solid shots. And even just a couple of them. I think it's AP, APC, APBC, but not APCBC or something like that. Just a couple of specific types of AP shell. So no APCR, no, APD, no APDS, no APFSDS. It's mostly just the 75mm uh, guns and 100mm guns with assault shots. The early ones at least. Oh, hello. You bastard. Right, spawning is nice and awful, but from the side doesn't really work, does it? There we go. Absolutely no problem going through the side of an IS-3. Oh, see, I love this gun. I, I really do love this gun. It's amazing. Uh, should watch our flanks, though. They have a nasty tendency of going through the flanks there. The bots have a set path to go. You can really notice that. Since the map is older, they actually bothered with putting pathing on the bots. Which they didn't really do with the uh, new map, the, the um, Maginot line. There's no pathing on the bots. They just... I mean, on one version it kind of works because essentially when the pa when the bots don't have a pathing, they just go straight directly to the objective, and it works when it's when the objective is in an open field. Uh, but there's a different version of the map where the ob where the objective is in the middle of a uh, big town, and they, they they just can't traverse those those streets. They just they just can't. They get stuck. And so they just draw the map or whatever. Now where is the enemy? You can kind of discourage the bots by the plumes of smoke they pull up. Oh, hello. I didn't even aim well. <laughs> I didn't even aim well. I went for the for the underside of the other tank and it still spalled into shit. What are you doing, dude? What are you humping? Oh god. Seems there's a tank over there, maybe? He is angry. <laughs> oh my god, the swing against Russian tanks is just memes. Oi. Oh fuck. I might be dead now. I might be dead now. Uh, maybe can reload in time? Did ricochet! What? What? Russian bias! Russian bias! Why are you giving me your side, dude? Honestly, I, I have to commend Gaijin here. 
You have to praise Gaijin for how accurately they, they portray the average arcade player. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I do play arcade myself if that's any, <laughs> any consolation, but yeah. Low tier arcade players, let's say low tier arcade players, they are, they are quite bad. Which, by the way, will make tanks like the um, Char B1 Tear, the premium one, very interesting because I think it has a shit ton of um, of armor for a very low battle rating, which makes it very, very good at low tiers. I, I told you, the 120 mm gun is goddamn amazing, especially considering the AP buff. Well, okay, the AP buff doesn't really apply to 120 mm guns. There's only 75, 90, and 100 mm guns in general. No APTS either, no PFSDS, no APCR sadly, just big AP shells. But yeah, they do a lot of damage now. A shit ton of damage. Hopefully you lads have enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below and by pressing that like button. I know I've been gone for a while now, I just really haven't been in the mood of playing War Thunder, especially not with aircraft, I just haven't really touched aircraft in weeks. But with the French 2 releasing, there are actually some really interesting tanks that I want to cover and hopefully do some videos, especially on new mechanics like the scout mechanics, the new maps like um, the Middle East map that you saw in the gameplay and the uh, Maginot line which is also quite nice, I like big maps. In any case, if you're new around here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. My name is Michael Boom and thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky Take a deeper breath and give it time You can walk the path among the lines with your shattered frame of mind There is that you could always stay We can wait right here and play Until somehow you can find